The Nerdy Architect. Why does modern architecture suck? Why the? Shouldn't our architectural design be in the pinnacle of its existence at the present moment? Standing upon the shoulders of all the beautiful work that has been done in the past, shouldn't our progress and technology help us make things that are more beautiful, more appreciated than ever before? But why do many people, including myself, say otherwise? And at the same time, why do many architects and designers worship, practice and promote the same designs? The same designs that are hated and despised by the public and considered dehumanizing by the people. Hey, look at this brand new glass and steel super skyscraper I designed. Ha! I want you all to worship it. <laughs> uh, uh, isn't that gonna heat up the environment and suit heat beams in the neighborhood? Kill a bunch of birds? So you're saying that you don't like the design of my building? I, I didn't say that. I mean, look around. It doesn't look that different. What? Uh, what? That's a tall cuboid? And that's a bloody cylinder? Mine is a phallic. Bigger than yours. <laughs> of course it's bigger than... Uh, anyways, it's... I don't like it. You layman, noob, plebeian. What? I'm kind of offended. You said me. You don't understand art. Mm. You can't understand the concept of beauty. No wonder I am the architect. You know what? You inferior human being. Zero, like zero intelligence. You know why I made this tall building? So stupid people like you can use it as a plank. Uh-huh. Look at me when I'm talking to you, you imbecile. Well, good riddance. <laughs> it's the same thing with modern art. The art is no longer for the audience. It's for the artists themselves. Imagine making a movie, not for the film goers, but for the writers, for the actors, for the directors and the producers. Actually, that also has been happening, hasn't it? Oh God. <laughs> I digress. Some of our architects and designers, they not just worship, I think some of them are attracted to some of these designs. I wouldn't be surprised if they even got off to it. Objectophilia, that's what it's called. I googled it. I actually wanted to find a more scandalous term to be honest. Hey, you know what? Did you see that new building in the city center? Oh yeah, 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 that sexy assembly of steel and glass, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought it looked quite monotonous, you know, just too generic, nothing really new. Oh hell no, it gives me the tingles. I actually thought about it last night when I was with my wife. What? 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 So, this is probably just me saying this, but I think most of those superstar architects, they conceptualize the designs of their building with a little bit of ego, a pinch of vanity, a nudge of ignorance, and a whole bunch of big degree. So it wouldn't surprise me if the designs they weren't for the people, but only for the satiation of the architects themselves and that one privileged patron client. So if it wasn't for the bylaws and the guidelines that's enforced by the cities, these architects and these big construction companies would be making really absurd things like this one. Right? And and this. <laughs> and this. They would be making this. And imagine somebody making this. And this one. This one's this one's ridiculous. Oh, it's stupid. Those are all real buildings. Wait, really? I thought those were just people doing conceptual stuff using AI to generate things and putting that shit on Instagram or some shit. No, they, they, they are all real. I actually designed this. Oh, my baby. Oh, the curves, the curves, the lines. I actually think about that particular building in my private time. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What in the name of Hippestus? <sighs> Anyways, modern architecture has been a subject of much debate. So, when did we come from this to this? Back in the day. Way back. No, no, no. Go more back. More back. Too, 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 too much back, forward, 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 yep, 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 right there. Okay, 
So we used to have local craftsmen, carpenters, sculptors, a diverse group of people coming together to design a building. Of course there would be an architect for larger buildings, but most common buildings and residentials they were mostly communal effort. And the large buildings, the centers of the civilization, these important buildings told stories. They had inscriptions, murals, rosettes, statues of gods, and statues of famous people, and statues of people with exposed genitals, and more statues of people with exposed genitals, and statues of animals with exposed genitals, and oh god, statues of people performing coitus. Hmm. <laughs> but what I mean is, there were stories, the myths, the events that transpired in history, all of this, were inscribed or painted on the buildings. This made buildings much, much more precious. People revered them, just like we revere our religious centers, because buildings like temples, churches, mosques, they are directly connected to the stories that we tell, so these buildings are protected, admired and sanctified even in our thoughts. But this changed. You can blame the centuries of colonization that forced the native people to build someone else's facade. You can blame the changes caused by industrialization or the indiscriminate destruction caused by the first and the second world wars. The mass production, the cadification, the lazy parametric generations. Or you can blame all of them. Whatever the cause, these modern designs they have grown more and more disconnected to the people and more and more connected to the computers that design them. And in general term, that means people's architecture has been dehumanized. And this has left many, including myself, feeling very little reverence, admiration or anything towards this mass-produced monotonous, lazy modern buildings. Okay, I made the ground floor. What the... What, what to do with the upper floors? Tough question, Kale. What do we do now? Uh, how about... Huh? Rewa mind blowing genius brain gasm. Now do it 50 more times and we'll have our building. I mean even back in the day, architects had stencils, tracing and everything. So it's not like people in the past didn't copy and paste the elements of their designs. But with the modern computer aided technology, the copy and pasting has been so prevalent that modern architects, they can't even imagine of a time when designing used to be a tough thing to do. People used to work a lot harder trying to design these things. They gave insanely more time and effort to their designs. And I'm not saying we go back to that, but what I'm saying is we have sacrificed beauty for easy, cheap and replicative work. Okay Mr. and Mrs. Human, I have your design. Look at this, isn't it beautiful? We asked for a traditional Persian style home, the one that reflects my ancestors and the land I was born in. But this is Persian, the new Persian. This is going to be the trend now. No, no, I'm not going to spend my money on this. This is not what I asked for. Okay, are you architect? No. Who architect here? You, of course. So I say you build this building, you building this building. I say this building Prince of Persia, this building Prince of Persia. Okay, this is ridiculous. I want a refund. Impossible. I put my heart and soul into this. This is the representation of my design. Original. From Wadia. You do not understand Aladdin style architecture. Honey, we're leaving. We'll be sending our lawyer. You do not understand. This is perfect design. Despite what I said earlier, most of the time the architects and the designers don't get to arbitrate and dictate most of their designs. It's usually the clients and the patrons who decide the end product. At times, even if the architect might be a half decent one, the client can be a bit ridiculous. If you are an architect in the East, just like I am, then often you will come across ancient signs like Feng Shui and Vastu Sastra. These were the signs used by ancient people to do spatial planning. But the way we build houses, and the way we select land for building houses has changed from back in the days. So if you try to apply these ancient signs text to text without realizing the concept and why exactly each rule was created, then you end up messing things up. Take a look at this one. Welcome Mr. It's a Mr. Bandit. So you want me to design a house for you? Actually, my priest, he already gave me the design. 
all Bastu Sastra confirmed. I have the picture here in my Facebook Messenger. Okay, uh, can I see the blueprint of the plot of your land? But of course, here you go. So, okay, this is 22 windows. But of course, very auspicious. No less, no more. Exact 22 windows. Ah, uh, okay. And the kitchen and the toilet is in the south? But of course, kitchen, toilet, always south, my priest said. But there's another building attached to the plot of your land towards the south. The sunlight will be blocked. You only have direct sun from the east and the west. No, what are you talking? Why sun problem? Toilet on south, kitchen on south, no problem. You don't understand. We actually have wet areas like toilet and kitchen to the south because sun passes through the south while going from east to west in our hemisphere, helping the wet areas dry faster, stay disinfected and healthy. Since you already have another building blocking the south, we'll have to adjust these over to the southeast and the southwest. So you say no toilet on the south? I mean, southwest is still kind of south. And no kitchen on the south. Southeast, right here. Very inauspicious. Bad mozo. You want to put a curse on us? Oh, all our gods and ancestors will spit on us. Bad architect. You very bad. What? No, I'm trying to help you. Come wife, we go to your brother. His son civil engineer. He will make what we ask. No question asked. No need a bloody architect. The stupid doesn't even know Bastu Sastra. So as you have seen, architecture has many issues in modern times. Sometimes it's the architects, sometimes it's the clients, but sometimes it's the neighbors. Especially if you're trying to build your house in a suburb. Take a look. Honey, this house is going to be perfect. In two weeks, we can move in. Oh yes, honey, it's so us. It's going to be beautiful. Zero net energy, home office, solar, terrace garden, a greenhouse, a little shop in the yard. I always wanted to live a sustainable life. <coughs> you must be Mr. and Mrs. Hard Worker. I see you have started to build your home. But we can't have that here. Not in this neighborhood. Excuse me? What do you mean? I am Karen, the supreme leader of the Homeowner Association. And this here is the signature of everyone in the neighborhood. You need to take your building somewhere else. No, we will not. Well here, read rule number one. All buildings will look the same. Piss brown tile roof, grey wall, a garage, 40 foot by 20 foot front lawn with half inch grass and nothing else, no pet animals, put a republican flag on the porch. This is ridiculous, this is our house, you don't get to tell us what to make. The rules tell otherwise. These rules are full of crap. Crap! Tomorrow I'll bring the PTA, the Homeowners Association, a League of Housewives and the town sheriff and then we'll see. We'll get you out of this neighborhood in two days. Karen, is it? Take a look at this. What is this rubbish? A permit for this building, signed by the city and endorsed by the state government for making it sustainable. No! 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 Never! Not here! Yeah, yeah right, right here. here. No, no, no. So finally, what do we want from our buildings? I can't speak for everyone else and I can only speak for myself. And I want the buildings around me to inspire me, to help me thrive as a human being. I want the buildings around me to tell me stories, the stories that my books, my parents and my teachers can never tell me. I want to feel that reverence towards the buildings. I want them to be beautiful treasured and valued for their spirit rather than their value in terms of money. I want the spatial planning, the streets, the parks, the squares to embrace me like sunshine in a cold winter day. I want to experience architecture like a calming meadow, like a refreshing breeze, like an oasis, like how our planet Earth is supposed to be in the deathly endless expanse of the universe. And to be fair, modern architecture can look beautiful and can be considerate. And undoubtedly there were ugly architecture in the past. Also let's not forget some of the most beautiful things that were made in the past were built by the most heinous ways possible upon the whipped, tattered and bloodied backs of the thousands of enslaved people. At present we stand atop a staircase with all the knowledge of the past in our fingertips and with the responsibility to build the steps towards the future. The same future that's ahead of all of us. And there are several constraints holding back us and our architecture. Like our ego, like our habit of enforcing conformity, and of course, the technological limitations we have created. 
Stuff like technology and conformity go very well with copy-pasted mass-produced buildings. And stuff like ego goes very well with iconically useless looking designs. So why create something that can be appreciated? Something beautiful? Something that is difficult to make when you can just make the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over? Or you can just create a giant male genitalia. It's up to you. Thank you for your time.